Prince is, oh, you're about to see something real special. I don't even mind that I'm hyping it. Hal Prince's very first Broadway credit was a review called Touch and Go. In the late 1940s, Prince began working for legendary Broadway multi-hyphenate George Abbott. In 1949, he was the second assistant stage manager on this review, written by Walter and Jean Kerr, but me, Walter, uh, that premiered at the Broadhurst. Many noted that the show suffered from opening on 44th Street, where the new musicals South Pacific and Where's Charlie were playing. Touch and Go just could not compare. But part of Touch and Go's charm was its juxtaposition of styles, commenting on the current state of Broadway at the time. The show included a sketch about Cinderella, directed by Elia Kazan in the style of Death of a Salesman. <laughs> Another big hit moment in the show was Be a Mess, about how Hollywood awards its best actress accolades to the actress who makes herself the most grotesque for her role. I feel like we still love to do that. <laughs> Atkinson did enjoy the show and wrote that it was good humored, bright, original, and intelligent, an excellent antidote to a long winter. Pearl Lang, slim and happy, is a buoyant ballerina. For young men, there are George Hall, Dick Sykes, and Ray Page, all of whom are alert and comic and look as if they know how to wash behind their ears. <laughs> um, in the first show, we were drinking every time you heard a problematic review. I think that would count, so feel free to start drinking more. <laughs> so the following is an excerpt uh, from Jen's interview with Hal for the Untold Stories of Broadway, which is her book. You can get it at your local bookseller. <laughs> and at the time, Touch and Go happened. I was working for George Abbott in his office, and this new show permitted me to move out and into a theater, which was where I truly wanted to be. As the second assistant stage manager, I was really a cowboy, but I was happy to be there at the Broadhurst. And part of my job was to knock on each door backstage and say, half hour, 15 minutes, and curtain at every single performance. And there was no sound system or intercom, so this all had to be done manually. That was okay at the Broadhurst because it's not that big of a theater. But later on, when I worked on a show at the Broadway, it took about five minutes. So by the time you finished giving everyone 15 minutes, it had actually turned into 10 minutes. And I could never manage to be quite in sync because of all the running around. The very first night I was hired, I was so excited and nervous that I actually lost my voice. So I ran around the Broadhurst, knocking on each door, saying in a very hoarse whisper, half hour. <laughs> In addition to being on the stage management team for Touch and Go, I was also an understudy. I had to go on for a role one night, and I was terrible. The, the Kerrs wrote a number called Great Dane a Cummin. The song was a send-up that asked the question, what if Rodgers and Hammerstein had written a musical version of Hamlet? <laughs> Hamlet was killed, and then an angel came and walked him up to heaven. <laughs> the actor who played the angel fell ill, and his understudy was also sick, so they threw an angel costume on me and sent me on stage. <laughs> when I entered at the end of the first act, I realized that no one had told the cast I'd be going on. <laughs> I, I can't do a Hal Prince impression, you know, but you can, you can picture it. The company was kneeling and singing contrapuntally as I came down to center to pick up Hamlet. As each person caught sight of me, they started to laugh. It ruined the choral parts. <laughs> Everyone tried to keep singing, but I was a sight to behold, and they couldn't help but break up. I finally got down to the footlights, where the actor playing Hamlet was waiting for me. At that moment, the conductor stopped the show. All of the musicians tapped their music stands in support of my performance. <laughs> the audience did not know what the hell was going on. <laughs> I seized Hamlet, turned around dramatically, and walked upstage as the act ended. <laughs> so, first we're gonna welcome the next actor to speak about Hal, um, and after he does that, we're gonna welcome him and some other folks to, for the first time since 1949, perform this number that Hal Prince performed in on Broadway. I would love to welcome to the stage, Jay Armstrong Johnson. How are you feeling tonight? Jen, this has been two years in the making, actually, this particular concert, so thanks for joining us. Um, I have had the distinct pleasure of being able to work with Hal before he passed away. Um, I did Candide with him at the New York City Opera. So much. Um, and I remember working with him, and he really uh, took me under his wing. He made me feel like family. I was invited to Prince Christmas parties, and I was get sweet texts with fun emojis from Mr. Prince on occasion, checking in with me to see 
how I was doing, and I remember um, I had done a television show, and the television show got canceled, and I had moved into a big apartment by myself, one bedroom, no roommates, it felt really cool. Um, and as my television show came to a close, I was freaking out and wasn't sure how I was going to pay rent, um, and I had some coffee with Megan Pacerno, who played Makunaganda and Candide, and she said, just call Hal. Ask Hal for some advice, which was some of the best advice she could ever give me, because I did end up calling Hal, and he was like a grandpa to me, and both my grandpas had passed away at that point, and so he really, he became a source of comfort and a source of inspiration. Of course, he's been a source of inspiration to every single person in this room, but I remember on that phone call, just being like, Hal, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna have to move out of my apartment, I don't have a job, and he advocated for those that he believed in, um, and he always believed in me, and, I, and gave me this wind beneath my wings, and I remember him saying, wow, <laughs> They're looking for Raoul and found him on the opera, a little too young for it, but I'm not sure what I can do. And the next day, I had an audition for Raoul and the Phantom of the Opera, and I never thought that I would ever be in that show. I never thought that I was tall enough or, or um, kind of princely enough. I always played like the weird quirky roles and like flipped around on stage. Um, but they, they gave me an audition, and I went in and I sang my butt off. And then they gave me a call back, and I sang my butt off again. And then they gave me another call back, and I remember Hal and his team brought me into an audition space and put the most high-tech cameras and lighting equipment on me that I had never had in a musical theater audition um, to show both Cameron McIntosh and Andrew Lloyd Webber, ever heard of him, um, that like, they had to put me in the best light possible because Hal was advocating for me. And then I ended up having my fifth Broadway show, and I didn't have to move out of my apartment, and I could still pay my rent. in Phantom when Hal passed, and that was one of the hardest nights of, I think, our whole lives, is making it through that show. I mean, um, being with uh, Kaylee. Are you here, Kaylee? I think she is. I'm scared on Friday, though, when Phantom really opens. But um, getting Kaylee through um, that show, singing Think of Me, um, at the night that Hal died, was it was um, going to be a memory that I will never um, soon forget. But I love you, Hal, and I'm super happy we're here celebrating. Thanks, Jenny. To do. Please welcome to George A. on stage Lauren Marcus, Babu Mohan, Kevin Michael Murphy, and Will Rowland. <laughs>
feel it. <laughs> As children, we would meet and stiffly bow. I hardly used to notice you, but who could miss you now? We used to pass on the palace stairs, and you would smile sweetly at me. But now you look more like a Christmas tree. Oh, Ophelia, you little tyke, you. Oh, Ophelia, there's no one like you. It's plain. Ophelia, honey, my queer little honey, come on. Then again, I'll count to ten for tomorrow.